David Lipton, welcome. Thank you. What were the main outcomes of the IMF's annual meetings? Well, the main outcome was that we had the entire membership, the entire international community here together to talk about how we can work together to address the, the economic problems that the world's facing right now. I think it was a very important opportunity for people to exchange views, uh, figure out what the diagnosis is of the problems, uh, think about what can be done to create solutions, and also what role the fund can play in helping members address those problems. Going into the meetings, the IMF's managing director, Christine Lagarde, described the global economy as having entered a dangerous new phase. Is it any safer now? Well, we are in a dangerous phase. I think, though, that the meetings have made some progress. It's very important that countries have come together and their ministers and governors have come together and come to an agreement in recognition of what the problems are. And I think they've taken a step beyond that in starting to talk about this specifically about the solutions that they could follow in order to address some of the problems that their countries face and that the global economy faces. The solutions are not yet in focus, but they're coming into focus, and I think that's an important step forward. So what are the priorities for policymakers in advanced economies, in emerging markets, in low-income countries? Well, each country and each region has its own uh, challenges and its own problems, so there really are, these are different in different places. But a number of countries have to contend with the elevated public debt levels and pursue fiscal consolidation. But they have to figure out how to do that while maintaining growth. Growth right now remains slow, and there are risks that growth could slow further. So a number of countries have to dedicate uh, efforts to, to make sure that there's growth as well. Uh, in some parts of the world, there are banking stresses that have to be addressed. And then there are many countries that don't have problems themselves, but of course live in this interconnected world and may find that spillovers from advanced economies will affect them. They have to uh, protect themselves, uh, rebuild buffers so that they have the strength to withstand uh, any pressures that may come in the coming years. Uh, in uh, low-income countries in particular, there's a need uh, for countries to uh, take, take uh, steps to protect themselves and be ready to uh, live through whatever uh, the world economy throws at them. So what do the IMFC recommendations mean for the IMF's priorities in the next six months? Well, there was a lot of discussion of that with uh, members. The managing director put forward an action plan, which included a set of things that the IMF could do to help its members, to help support growth and stability in the global economy. Part of that has to do with how we interact with our members in what we call the surveillance process, under which we work with countries to help them assess uh, the problems they face and the policies that they may pursue. We work with them to help them understand how actions in one part of the world affect countries and peoples in other parts of the world. And we're dedicating a lot of uh, time and energy to try to be better at the job of surveillance. Beyond that, of course, we provide financial resources to countries that have problems. Uh, there are some countries with uh, quite healthy economies that may be influenced by the problems in advanced economies, and we are in a position to uh, provide some financial support when countries uh, find that they are the uh, victim of spillover effects from uh, advanced countries. Uh, there was a lot of discussion here at the meetings about the ways in which the IMF can uh, adjust and improve uh, the financing facilities we have in order to better respond to the needs of our member countries. Thank you very much, David. Thank you.